now we have seen the drawings, we have created a WPS that you are going to use. It's still not the final WPS though, but you are going to use it fine so far. For sure you are going to refine it more while doing the activities. But first let's look at an example while we are working on the construction WBS. Let's take an example for the engineering log. It's just a sample for engineering log. This is the kind of engineering log. It's the building name, it's the real number, the site number, estimated shop drawings for architectural. How many is estimated? Zero. For such a case it's like, let's say it's the end of the project. It shouldn't be zero for sure if it's the beginning of the project. Structural zero, mechanical zero, electrical seven. This means for sure it's at the end of the project and just updated for the estimated for the remaining works. But if you are going to check this for a second, we have architectural, structural, mechanical, electrical, and low current. Isn't low current a scope of electrical? Yeah, for sure. So why it's different? You can, you can make it same activity or same WBS or same work package. But usually it's different, not, not usually, but some projects, they separate it because either you as working as a main contractor, you are going to have an MEP subcontractor with a different low current specialist and you are the one that making the coordination. So that's why you want to separate the package. Usually, when you have different subcontractors, you would like to separate the packages as activities or as work packages for them to better monitor and control their scope of work. So now, you can either combine it or no. Even if you have an MEP subcontractor, usually the MEP subcontractor would have a specialist in the low current systems because there is a different low current systems. There is almost 11 or 12 low current systems according to the facility you are going to construct, there is also way less. So according to such system, you need a specialist to do the works from engineering, procurement, construction, everything. So that's why it's separated sometimes. This is not something that you're going always to use, but sometimes you're going to use such template. There is a lot of different templates and different formats for the engineering log and for each and every different log. And this is just a sample. So now, you, why did you have a look for the engineering log now? While you're working on construction, you should only focus on construction. But you always should keep in mind how you're going to relate it with the engineering. Especially if it's an EPC project, which is engineering, procurement, construction project. You should always keep in mind how you're going to make the relations as well, even when you are constructing your activities. So now let's go back to our main course, which is teaching P6 with the case study of construction. So going back here, how you're going to create your activities. Now you're in the WBS CAD, WBS tab. So when you press add, you are just going to add another WBS. So let's move to the activities tab. In the activities tab, it seems there's nothing. Even the WBS you have just created. It doesn't appear here. So how to show it? Just right click in anywhere. Then group and search anywhere here, not in the bar chart. And here as you see, hide if empty. This talks about the WBS. So if you really want to see your WBSs, you will just untick it, then apply. And here's the beers to you. As you want, guard room, which is the project, construction. Assume we are working on construction project only. You have the engineering ready and the procurement is ready. So structural, MAB, architectural, these are the WS that you have just created. So to add an activity, here the add button will add the activity, not the WS because you are in the activity tab. Press it. So now, a new activity wizard appears. You can, you can also remove this by using the admin references. You can see this. Or you can just use it to remind you to use which activity ID and to write the activity name. You can assign each and everything here. For just think, for the activity IDs especially, I have a lot of recommendations. 
according to the project and the complexity of the project. But you always want to make sure that you can read the activity and understand everything about the activity from the activity ID. Let's say as much as possible because as complex the project goes, it would be harder. But at least you would have a very good estimate for where the activity is and what is the activity, at least in the main package, is it low current, is the electrical, is it where. So let's take an example for such thing. You can write st dash, let's say, uh, 1000. You can do it like this way, which is structural, 1000, it's just a number, 1001, 1010, 1020, for the structural works. Or you can make it structural, let's say for excavation, exc dash 10, you are going, or 100 to give you more space, or 1000 even, to write for the excavation works, or let's say the civil works, and then a concrete works, you can name it as much as you can, or you can always use the uniformat and the master format, or use the company codes if you are using a working enterprise, you should may always make sure that you are using the same codes and the same ID structure used by different projects in order to make a better coordination as overall organization. For the sake of this, we are going to make it just GR, as for guard room, structural works, then we are going to make it once out and to make it easier for us now. The activity name, we will start with the detailed excavation, or the bulk excavation, or we can combine both and make it just excavation works. You can, to see just the next, if you want, you can just press the finish. The next is showing at which WS this activity falls in, which is the structure. And the type of activity, it's either finish milestone, level of effort. Finish milestone is just, let's say, the project finish. Level of effort shows that, for example, attendance, that no resources are assigned or anything, but just showing attendance for activity. Resource dependent, that means that the duration is dependent on the resources, not vice versa. This means that you are going to use the duration dependent on the resources. You have limited resources, and according to such limited resources, what's the duration? Or you can make it task dependent, which is you have five days to finish this item, and accordingly you're going to make your calculations or expert judgment or even analogous estimation and make sure, analogous estimation like comparing with another older project, similar project, or even expert judgment asking the experts, or even by metric, which is using the productivity rates. The start milestone, let's say the project start, WS summary, it's automatically shows for the whole structure works. So we will make this task dependent. Then next, we are not going to assign any resources now. Next, fixed duration, units, fixed duration, we'll keep this for now. Next, and then you can assign the duration here. Or the next you would like to see we will make this later on assigning next do you want to add more data next I prefer to finish one by one so I usually would I like to use I would like to use the first you can say the first wizard the first thing which appears in the wizard the reason duration it's easier to make it from here we let's say we're going to make it excavation for shots thing you have one book plane cannot make more than one backline, for example. Let's say we are going to give it five days, five days, or six days, six here. When you write six days, it's six working days. Be aware, it's not six calendar days. So now that's fine. You got this.